All right, guys, what's going on? This is Ryan, AKA Kenner and Clark with Block Roots. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about trading with margin and leverage on the new derivatives platform that everyone's talking about, Femix. And before we get into any of those details, I just wanna talk about what's going on on the homepage. Okay, you can see right away, this says that it is the fastest cryptocurrency derivatives exchange. And that is true. They currently offer a speed of over 300,000 transactions per second. So that is the epitome of high speed and low latency, all right? And as far as exchanges go, we know of all the nightmare stories when it comes to exchanges not being able to function during periods of heightened volatility and increased volume. So if you imagine that crypto is going to grow by any degree, whether we consider this linear or nonlinear, um, anyone who is failing right now, any of those failures will likely be exacerbated moving forward. Okay, so you definitely want to be with the technology. Now, these guys built programs for Morgan Stanley. Okay, so the pedigree and track record of this team is what I think is one of the strongest selling points. So if we just look at the team, a lot of them came from Morgan Stanley and did this in the financial services sector and worked for a company that is client first. And I think that that's one of the most important things that when it comes to exchanges, considering we need to really rely on this counterparty, that they are trustworthy individuals, okay? That they have our best interests in mind and that they have core values that they stand by. Okay, so we have this and we have the technology. Now, currently, Phoenix offers Bitcoin, ETH, and XRP, but they are adding Chainlink, Tezos, and Litecoin. They will be adding other pairs as well as far as cryptocurrencies go, but the thing that interests me the most are these other products that they listed. They're going to be listing traditional financial products such as indices, S&P stocks, interest rates, Forex, commodities, you name it. And if we think of how the market is likely going to progress, Bitcoin is likely going to trade more in line with other macro assets, okay, as it finds its space on the macro stage, all right? What this means is that it will likely develop a relationship with other macro assets, whether or not it's a positive correlation or a negative correlation, or rather an inverse correlation, right? So regardless of what type of relationship it has, when you have something that has a relationship to begin with, it presents us with tradable opportunities, okay? Something referred to as pairs trading, something you could take advantage of, right? When these pairs that normally have a certain behavior get out of whack, right? So when we trade some type of reversion to the mean between maybe how they normally are with relation to each other, okay? So the fact that they're gonna be offering these in the near future, I think is absolutely tremendous. Now, right off the bat, you can see that they're doing just over half a billion dollars in trading volume, okay? So currently, this is more than Deribit, this is more than FTX, this is actually more than 90% of other exchanges out there right now. Now aside from that, okay, right on this front page, you could see that they are offering a trading bonus. So I would say whenever there is any opportunity to get free money, to take that opportunity, right? Now arguably this is not the selling point. I've already mentioned a few things that are far more noteworthy, but uh, it is just one of those added benefits. So before we get into looking at the actual exchange, let's just talk about what margin, leverage, and derivatives are briefly. Margin is essentially the capital that you're putting up to borrow on behalf of. When it comes to margin, what we're doing is we're putting up a certain amount of money in order to take out a loan. So it's collateral. Our initial margin is the Bitcoin that we put onto the position and the leverage is the amount that, that we're increasing that position by. If we are using leverage properly to mitigate for counterparty risk, and by that I mean that instead of using it to increase your exposure, what you're doing is you're using it to protect yourself from counterparty risk. So rather than exposing all your spot Bitcoin out of your hardware wallet okay, onto this exchange, even though that they develop their own um, hierarchical deterministic cold wallet system, rather than putting your Bitcoin onto this exchange, you could put a portion of it increase the leverage and represent your off exchange amount. So you don't have to put all of your Bitcoin onto the exchange to represent that greater sum. So you put $1,000 on the exchange, Bitcoin is $10,000. You increase the leverage by 10, you're currently trading on behalf of one Bitcoin. All right, so now you see how that works. Now, obviously there are some specifics that you have to keep in mind, okay, especially since this contract is margined in the underlying, you have to think about how convexity affects us. And by that, I mean that since the contract is margined in the underlying instrument, this is something that is unique. We don't trade gold margined in gold, right? So because of this, longs can actually be liquidated faster than shorts, all right? Because as the long position is decreasing in value, 
the instrument that you put up as the margin is also decreasing in value as well. But we'll get into this. We've covered this uh, in separate videos. I'm going to keep this specifically about Femix and trading on the exchange. So we've covered what margin is and what leverage is, and now briefly what derivatives are. So we've heard of other types of derivatives. We've heard of forwards, futures, options, swaps, and so forth. Now this is a unique derivative. This is an inverse perpetual swap contract. It is essentially a synthetic future. Now it's unique because it doesn't expire and it constantly settled. So think of it that way. It doesn't really expire. It doesn't have a future expiry date. And because of that, it doesn't need to, at a future date, come in line with the spot price. Instead, it needs to do this all the time. All right. Normally, futures contracts will trade at either a premium or a discount to the underlying spot. Okay. And what this means is they are essentially going to be trading either above or below the spot instrument. And depending on whether the market's in contango or backwardation, this will be the case. Now, if the market's in contango, this is a normal market. Um, this takes into account interest rates. This takes into account opportunity costs, storage costs, so forth. This is called cost of carry. Now, with the inverse perpetual swap contracts, what you're doing when you're longing Bitcoin is you're actually shorting the dollar. And when you're shorting Bitcoin, you're actually longing the dollar versus Bitcoin. Okay, this is how the contract is structured. Now, the perpetual swap contract never expires. So in because futures contracts can trade at either premium or discount, we have to keep the derivative, which is derived from the underlying instrument. Okay, keep in mind, you're not trading spot Bitcoin on this exchange. You're trading a derivative, means that you can get liquidated. Even if you're trading on behalf of your, if you put $10,000 on this exchange and you open up a $10,000 position, your position is already long because your spot Bitcoin is on the exchange and now you're opening up a new position. Okay, and you're putting up margin for that, all right, which is 50% margin actually. So if the market moves against you 50%, you liquidate all of your holdings. All right, so keep that in mind. Now, normally the futures market is trading at either a premium or a discount. If it's trading at a premium, it's above the spot price. If it's trading at a discount, it's below. And if the market is like this across the term structure, it's either in contango or backwardation. Now, sometimes the underlying in this case is below the perpetual swap and sometimes it is below. Okay, We think about the fact that people are using leverage on this exchange. There's a little bit more gunpowder behind these positions. Okay, So we're going to see that this is going to swing sometimes around the underlying index. And the underlying index is the underlying spot price of Bitcoin. And it's derived from a bunch of Oracle exchanges. And essentially, it is the underlying spot price, the true spot price of Bitcoin at the time. Now the derivative is going to swing around that sometimes, but we need to make sure that it stays true to it over time, okay? Because again, this is delta one. And what that means is that for every $1 change in the spot instrument, we should see a $1 change in the derivative contract, okay? It's a one for one, um, very linear change in that regard. So because sometimes it's trading a little bit above or a little bit below, Right, in order to keep this settling against the index, they use something called a funding mechanism. And the funding mechanism is similar to an interest rate component within a margin exchange. So if you opened up a margin account on your stock brokerage, your equity brokerage, uh, you'd be paying interest to keep positions open. Okay, If you borrowed money, you'd be paying interest against that loan. Now, this is not as expensive as margin interest can be, but the purpose of this is that when the funding is positive, all right, a lot of the market, or rather the dominant positioning in the market is aggressively long when the market is moving up clearly. right? So this is a peer-to-peer -peer exchange, and futures contracts are, uh, this is a zero-sum game, so there is a buyer for every seller, but sometimes the price of the futures contract goes above the spot instrument. All right? And in this case, longs have to pay shorts. Now, the funding mechanism moves price back to the underlying spot price because when longs have to pay shorts every eight hours, they can close their position out preemptively so that they don't have to pay. And this essentially creates selling pressure. Now, when shorts are not in position or someone is sidelined, they're incentivized to take a short because they get paid that funding, right? So if you're on the sidelines and funding is beneficial to shorts, if you jump into position right before that funding period expires, you get paid that funding rate. And it's paid based on the notional value of contracts you hold. So Essentially, it's a very small value because it, it is measured in basis points. So right now, um, if you consider a basis point is 1 100th of a percentage, um, this is five basis points. So it's a very small value, but if you're taking out a position on very high leverage with a very small initial margin, you could see how this can decay into your actual initial capital. So 
the funding rate is sort of that interest rate component. And if you're going to keep a position on for a long period of time, this is something you need to keep in mind. All right. And this is what makes the perpetual contracts different is that there is no expiration. You can keep these on indefinitely. So now that we have that more or less understood, let's talk about the exchange. Okay. Now you have everything that you would generally have on a traditional spot exchange. Okay. You have your chart, you have your order book, you have your times and sales. All right. You have your depth of market. Now, a few things that are unique to this exchange or unique to trading uh, on a margin exchange or on one of these more sophisticated derivative platforms, okay, is not only do you have the contract details here, you have this leverage bar. All right. Now you can use cross leverage, which means that if I have a certain amount of capital on the exchange and I want to be long, let's say I want to be long 1000 contracts, this is going to apply leverage based on my overall portfolio. So it's going to adjust the margin based on my position and how it changes after I put it on. So it's going to actually use my portfolio balance as margin. And this is kind of dangerous if you do put positions on and you don't have stops on because if you don't have a stop on, your whole position is going to be used to keep that position open. And if it moves against you, you could essentially have your entire portfolio liquidated. So in order to mitigate for that, put on uh, isolated leverage in this case and only it's going to be isolated to the position you open, um, which in a sense means that if you're liquidated, that it's not going to affect your overall, um, your overall holdings on the exchange. So the purpose of leverage again is to mitigate for counterparty risk. It's not so that I could put on a position with $1,000 and represent a $100,000 position, right? Because if I'm putting on a hundred times leverage position, what that means is the market only has to move 1% against me. If I put on a 50 times leverage position, it means the market only has to move roughly 2% against me. Okay, so there's a lot of danger involved in putting on a greater capital exposure position. So the thing about this exchange that more sophisticated exchanges offer are these order types. All right, so we have limit order, we have market order. With a limit order, we guarantee a price, but we don't guarantee an execution. What this means is someone has to hit our order. So if I put on an order for a specific price right now, if you see that the current price is 9,333, let's say I want to buy at only 9,300, 9,200. So I'm going to buy for a thousand contracts. Okay. I'm going to buy and I could put my take profit and my stop on immediately, which is an incredible part about this. This makes your life so much easier, it reduces all the friction and all of the stickiness that is involved in the trading process. So right away, let's say I want to put a take profit at, I could either do a percentage or specific price, 9,400 and my stop loss. I want to say, let's put it at roughly 9,000 flat. So right away, this is going to put a position on and you're going to see that in this case, if we zoom out, we see that our position is right here. So the market needs to come into this. Okay. And there needs to be an adequate amount of selling in this case. Um, and so much so that it's not blowing right through my price that my position can be filled. All right. There's no guarantee that I get in. All right. But I'm going to be guaranteed that I get in at that specific price when it does execute. Okay. So once this executes, my take profit and my stop will be placed on. This is again, tremendously convenient. Okay, but again, this doesn't guarantee execution. It guarantees that your price is precise. All right, no pun on that. The other type of order, and we've gone over these previously, are market orders. So market orders guarantee execution. They don't guarantee fill. Basically, you're taking up whatever liquidity is localized to this central area. So if I place a market order right now for more than 300,000 contracts, I'm going to incur slippage because I'm going to take up this first offer right here and go into the second offer. So this is all about what is relative to the current market price, but it does guarantee I get in. Okay. Now, some of the more advanced features are these order types. Okay. Or rather these are called time and force. So good till cancel means that when I put an order on, if I put an order on over a long period of time, as long as I don't cancel, it's going to stay on forever. So say I'm a position trader or an investor. And I want to get filled over a, say, a uh, certain yearly or monthly open, one of these more higher time frame considered zones. I leave this on. It's going to stay on forever. Immediate or kill means that or immediate or cancel means that the order, if it's filled at a certain price, if it can no longer be filled at that price, it's going to be canceled. So whatever is remaining will be canceled. Okay. It takes what it can, it gets filled for that amount, and then it cancels the remainder. Okay, so immediately takes this order off the book. Fill or kill is either all or nothing. Okay, and this is good for scalpers who have a specific lot size in mind. 
when you put fill or kill on, it is a contingent order type that says either get me in absolutely for everything I want or don't put me in at all. So think of it that simply. You're either going to get in exactly how you want or you're not going to get in at all. And it's immediately going to cancel the order. Okay. And this is a very specific time and force order that is beneficial to scalpers. And this brings us to our next type of order, which is a post only order. So post only, this is essential for people who are using limit orders. Okay. And again, for people who are using, who are scalping, who are maybe um, very cost sensitive. So scalpers are cost sensitive. They have to take in mind certain slippage and certain fees because they're not getting big moves to begin with. Their RR is pretty low. Their hit rate is high. Um, they have to take into consideration what they're paying just to get in a trade. So post only ensures that when I place a limit order on the book that I am guaranteed to get in at a limit. Okay. Sometimes when I use a limit order, let's say I put in a limit order right now and price is 9,327. Let's say I'm trying to put it in at 9,326. If I press to enter in buying right now and there is a period of heightened volatility, if the market moves through my order, now my price is going to be above the current market price if price drops. So if I try to place a limit order, okay, when market is below me and I'm above it, it's going to execute as a market order. It's going to take liquidity. So my limit order will turn into a market order. I'm going to be paying a fee. Post only ensures that if I go to place an order, and I have this selected, if the market moves during the time that I go to place it and it's executed, that it will not be executed, it'll be canceled. Okay, and make sure that this order can only go on as a limit order. And I'd say that you should keep this checked because a lot of the time when you use a limit order, your intention is to get a limit fill, all right? And to not have to pay that taker fee. You're either providing liquidity or taking liquidity when you're using a limit or a market order. In the case of a limit order, you're providing liquidity. You're helping the exchange, okay? You're helping with overall liquidity, all right? Reduce only ensures that when I put a position on the book, it cannot inadvertently or accidentally open up a new position. So sometimes when you put a position on, okay, you might not recognize that you still have an open position that you maybe would have closed out. So let's say that, for example, I have a position on and I have a contingency or conditional order type selected where maybe I have a trigger and my order is put on and I am potentially, let's say in this example, stopped out of a trade. All right, so my stop is below the price, price moves through my stop. I might have had a take profit or a limit, in this case, above. All right, if my position is stopped out and I still have this order up here, all right, let's say that accidentally my position is stopped out and then price comes back upward, all right? My position is still on the books, okay? And my position was intent or my intention was that this position would close out an order, wouldn't open up a new order. If I have a limit order to sell up here and I am no longer in a position to get out of, all right, what this is not going to do is close out my position. It's going to open up a new position which is going to increase my exposure. So reduce only, the purpose of reduce only is to make sure that this order only decreases my position value or only decreases the amount of position that I have open, okay, and in effect does not increase my allocation to uh, a certain asset or uh, in, in any sense um, adding to margin. So these are really important, okay. You always have to make sure that you're really aware of your positions uh, when you're on the exchange, any open orders that you have, you have to make sure that you really Again, as, as they would say, dot your I's and cross your T's. So conditional order types, these are unique as well. What these allow is me to say, maybe I don't want to be in position where we currently are, but maybe let's say I want to open up a position if we come above here or if we fall below here. What I can do is I can put on either a limit or a market order and set a trigger. So let's say I want it to be the last price and I want it to be triggered by close on trigger. Let's see the current value current trigger price, let's say I want a long if we come above 9,700. So my trigger is 9,700. I want to be long 1,000 contracts only if we cross above that, all right? Only if we cross above that value do I want to be long. So what this does is this puts a position on up here that I'm not in. And I could put one up here and I could put one down here. I could essentially bracket price similar to what you would do if you're trading an option strangle or an option straddle. So what I'd be taking advantage of is any type of volatility any type of move with high conviction, high confidence that I anticipate is going to travel quite a distance, right? So what happens is as price passes through my level, it triggers my market order to buy and I'm entered into position. Okay. Now 
You could do this with a market order. You could do this with a limit order. Now, the great feature about this exchange is you can move these things. All right, so you don't have to have an order on indefinitely. I could adjust it. All right, so if price is getting away from me, let's say I want to catch up to it and get as close as possible. I could just adjust all these. Now, everything about this is about convenience. It's about execution. All right, this exchange allows you to move all this stuff around that you're looking at. All right, we haven't even got to my, my favorite feature yet. It allows you to customize what you're looking at as far as this interface. And again, this is your, you're in the cockpit. Okay, you are the pilot, you are the fighter pilot. Have this set up exactly as you wish, however you are comfortable, okay? So we covered these order types, all right? We covered the limit, the market, the conditionals, okay? Close on trigger, the same thing as reduce only, all right? But this is going to apply to a conditional order type. This is just gonna make sure that the, that the conditional is not a conditional to open. This is like putting a stop on. All right, so let's say we have a position open and we want to add a stop on after we have already put the position open. We didn't choose to incorporate the stop on already uh, as we open the position. Because remember, as we're opening up a position, what we can do is we can essentially just place the stop immediately. Stop and take profit. Okay, this is extremely convenient. Now, remember, you're going to see where your liquidation price is based on the amount of leverage you use. And you have to keep this in mind, the distance and the liquidation price because again, remember, if you're not using leverage properly and you're liquidated, that's your capital online, right? Never use your liquidation as a stop. Okay, so this brings us to what I think are the most important features of the exchange. All right, so we've covered what the contract is, okay, how the funding mechanism works, how to use leverage, all right, what the conditional and contingent order types are, okay. The most important feature about this part or rather feature of this exchange, I think, is the fact that it offers this USD wallet. So other exchanges, you need to put on a synthetic short. And what that means is if you don't want to be exposed to the market anymore, like a spot exchange, you can't just sell into cash. You have to put on a short position. And if the funding rate was not beneficial to shorts at that time, you'd be paying that interest rate component uh, off your notional value of contracts. So let's say that you had a million dollars on the exchange and you wanted to to gain some type of um, uh, gain some type of protection uh, in some type of synthetic USD, all right, or, or or eliminate excuse me eliminate your exposure, you'd have to go one times short your entire portfolio value. And if currently shorts were paying funding, you'd be paying whatever interest rate component or funding rate there would be right off your account value. So you'd be paying to keep that. Um, position in synthetic USD. Now, rather than doing that, they have a USD wallet. And what this allows you to do is to eliminate your exposure to the underlying spot instrument. Okay, so to get out of Bitcoin and get right in USD. I think that this is most important. I've always been someone who's traded traditional assets and traded around uh, the dollar. It's not like I've been trading around um, the idea of Bitcoin until, until getting into cryptocurrency. And some people value this because when you're longing on a derivatives platform, you're essentially, you're longing something that you're already long. So when you're long Bitcoin and you open up a position here, again, you're already long because your spot Bitcoin is exposed to the underlying market. So we have a USD wallet and you could, you could see right away, you know, we have the wallet. Okay. We have the USD trade account and the BTC trade account. Okay. Not only that, we have the same thing for XRP and ETH. With XRP and ETH though, you could actually trade right from USD Okay, to these assets. So you don't have to worry about trading right from Bitcoin to Bitcoin, which in this case you're doing when you are trading Bitcoin. You could get into Bitcoin to USD, but you're not trading uh, Bitcoin um, from USD, right? You are already exposed unless you go into USD. So the other thing about this exchange that I think is absolutely incredible is the fact that you could create sub accounts. So you could see right here, I have Cantor and Clark test, and then I have Cantor and Clark sub account. What this allows me to do and no other exchange really offers this, is I can have different positions open. Okay, I can have varying positions open, incorporating different amounts of margin, different amounts of leverage, and also being in opposing directions. Okay, so currently you can't do this on other exchanges. If you are long Bitcoin on, let's say, BitMEX, and you want to maybe hedge a position in a certain fashion, uh, or maybe you are not really sure, certain of market direction, you'd rather have two positions on where you currently are, um, and maybe just close one leg out when the market starts to resolve in one direction more confidently. Uh, you couldn't do this because if you put on a position long 
and then you put on an equal amount of contracts short, you're just you're closing out your position. All right, you're just reducing your overall exposure. So the fact that they offer sub accounts on Femex makes that possible, right? So we can actually do something where, let's say we're really uncertain, we want to be exposed though. Um, what we can do is we can have two opposing positions on and then we could just close one leg out. And this would be similar to if we were talking about trading options and we had two legs open. Uh, and then in that case, we would just close one leg out when the market again picked a direction. So these are some of the more obvious features. Um, again, we covered pretty much everything from the unique things of this exchange, the team, uh, as far as the tech goes, absolutely incredible. I would say to go onto this exchange, sign up and try using the test net. All right, just practice on the exchange, get a feel for it. They're gonna be making some updates as far as the interface goes, they're gonna be adding assets. Um, and right now, in my opinion, you wanna be with the tech. All right, not only do you wanna be with the tech, but you wanna be with a reputable team. And I think that's what Femex really has going for them right now. Okay, so if anyone has any questions as far as anything we talk about in this exchange, okay, be sure to check out our other videos on Block Roots. Uh, we also have the Block Roots platform at blockroots.com. As always, this is Ryan, aka Kenner and Clark, exercise proper risk management and trade effectively.